All right, welcome to our container security uh, weekly group meeting. Um, Alexander, I think you've got the first one. Do you want to give us a quick demo of what you've done? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so I definitely was ready for that. Uh, oh no, I have no idea which screen's sharing. I oh, it's the right one. For this meeting. Very good. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, so in the staging project, the we have alerts. You can change the status, and now there's the hide dismiss alerts. Getting one step closer to that MVC. So this hides. Don't ignore that. Don't worry about that. Um, not only the dismissed, but the resolved. And so, um, maybe that wording is actually unclear now. But what leaving you with unreviewed and in reviewed alerts on the page. That's great. Yeah, maybe hide closed alerts would probably be the terminology to cover both of those. But yeah, that looks great. Great work on that. Yeah, so we are iteratively moving forward, which is exciting. Awesome. And then uh, I posted on our team channel today, but for the sake of the recording and anyone who might be watching, we now have new documentation. This has been long awaited uh, for us, but we have a new page here in um, it actually we repurposed a page that existed before it's under infrastructure securing your deployed applications, but we've totally revamped this page. There's now an overview for each of these as well as an installation guide. Um, so if you have a chance to take a look at that, it should now be significantly easier to get started using our technologies and we give you hints. Uh, if you run into problems on how to how to troubleshoot a little bit. So um, great step forward. I'd love to keep those up to date as we do documentation updates going forward. So um, if we make document update documentation updates and it belongs in another place, that's fine. We should just include a link to wherever that is um, on that page. So that way we have one place with all of the links. Because um, right now our documentation is scattered through like five different places in the docs. And for somebody to go and happen to find all of those places, it's really hard. Um, what um the with the alerts documentation, does that go under container network security or container host security? So that's actually that's a tricky one because it actually overlaps container network security and security orchestration. Um, because security orchestration is an overlay category. So when we release, uh, hopefully when we release our MVC, what, January 22nd, that's when we'll move security orchestration to minimal maturity. So it'll technically be under security orchestration, but mm -hmm. because we're doing container network policy alerts first, it, there's a lot of overlap with that category. So it's the answer is yes, it's both. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is, oh, it's this third page that is not on here. Got it. Yeah, we'll probably... <laughs> it's still also somewhere else. Yeah, I don't know if it makes sense to add a page for security orchestration. I think we'll have to see how that plays in. We already have a page where we talk about the policy editor. Um, so right. I don't know. We'll have to work with Nick on that one to see where that documentation should belong, should live but it's an overlay category because we might have alerts coming in from all sorts of places there. So it's not, uh, it, it, it probably wouldn't quite be right to put all the documentation in container network security. It probably needs its own place, but we'll, we'll sort that out <laughs> when the time comes. And then um, you mentioned if there's other, uh, other parts of the code or uh, documentation that relates to one of these that we should have link in there. I take it there is a link to security orchestration somewhere on this new documentation page. So we don't have any documentation on alerts yet because we haven't released it. So that'll be in that new page that we're creating. Oh, I see. I see. So security or security orchestration is a new page. Yeah. It's not an existing one. It's not existing. What about? I got it. And what about the policy page? You said we already had a- That does exist today, yes. 
And, I and there's a link that. in one of these. Yep. Yeah. There is. Okay. Got. It. Sorry, I haven't looked at it yet. My bad. No worries. Um, yeah, I can drop a link to that in in our notes. Thank you. Um, I think this is it. You don't have to do it now. It's fine. Cool. Well, um, the meat of this meeting, I wanted to spend doing planning breakdown for our follow-up design improvements. Zamir, um, I know this is mostly the front end, so bear with us. Uh, but this is more than anything else, uh, just to make sure, Alexander, that you're ready to go here. Um, I know Kyle was going to wrap those up before he headed out on PTO. I'm not sure he quite got done with everything, and some of that might have been my fault as well. I noticed there were a bunch of comments that somehow slipped through the cracks that I didn't notice uh, ahead of time. So we'll go through this the best we can. And if there are extra items that we need to follow up on with, like afterwards, after the break, um, we'll just make note of those uh, as needed. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, so I'm trying to keep this front end work only just to let the back end team, once they wrap up what they're doing now, I want to switch them over to the DAST project level scan policies. So anything that is back end, unless it's absolutely critical, we're probably just going to descope it. Um, but at a high level, the requirements would be to show policy name, which I think we're already doing uh, as just the name of the alert the environment and the status. So I think this requirement is mostly met already. The only new one would be in the environment. And if we're not able to do that, if it's not coming through from the backend data, then we'll just descope that. Um, but it does say to filter as well. Um, I, I guess I should probably technically remove this. We probably don't want to have them filter by name, but we do want to have them filter by environment and by status. So if Oh yeah, and by name as well. So yeah, environment, policy, and status. So that way um, the policy is the name. It should be the one and the same, but that way they can come in here and I don't have this working in the prototype, but they should be able to click this and filter by any of those. Um, Would it maybe, never mind. I'll, I'll ask my questions later. Either way, you're fine to ask them in line too. I don't mind. Would um one thing one thing that there might be drop a back end work to do. Well, maybe I wouldn't be. I have to never mind. I was thinking about filtering by policy name and how we'd get that drop down list uh, of policy names. It might be um we might have to start with just a search box that someone can just type in the policy name. That might be a good starting point. I'm not sure if we have a, a list of all the policy names, but we might, I have to look into it. Got it. Yeah, if you wanted to do something like that as a first pass, I would consider that as still meeting the requirement. Um, so the next one is viewing details of an alert. Priority wise, this is, uh, I didn't intentionally put this in priority list, but that's probably pretty accurate. This is re a really high priority because as the list exists right now, it's not practical for anyone to use because you can't get any details about these things at all. You just see it happen and that's it. So the very next thing that anybody is going to want to do is to actually get all of the log details. So to click on it, and I think um, the design Kyle leaned on was more like this rather than what we have in our prototype, but to be able to get all of those details from the log there in that sidebar. Um, so again, priority wise, like as we're thinking about this Epic, that's gonna be a super high priority. If they can't get the log details, then um, you know they, they can't action on it at all. And so um, being able to surface those up is, is pretty critical. Um, I did put in just some late very late feedback this morning as I noticed it saying, hey, maybe we want to take this, you know, details pane and format it a little bit more cleanly where, you know, we're putting it in more of like a table format with, 
you know, your key value pairs here and maybe, you know, formatting like our timestamps as actual date times instead of just a big long number string, uh, you know, like it comes across in the logs, but I would view all of those as stretch goals. If we can even just dump out the raw log, that's going to be a huge incremental iterative improvement over where we're at today. Um, and just stop me. If you've got any questions on these, please stop me and let's talk about them. Um, um, so the next one, assign and unassign of individuals to an alert. I have not seen designs from Kyle on this one yet, but the good news is that we've got a pretty strong paradigm for this elsewhere in GitLab already, um, you know, where we've got this assigning thing in the sidebar. I don't think there's any need to reinvent the wheel here. I would expect us to just take this same widget and, you know, drop it in uh, in between the title up here section and the details section down there. So we would just reuse that component if it is a reusable component um, and not reinvent the wheel for that one. I think longer term, we also would want to consider showing somewhere in the table and, you know, maybe a person's icon somewhere on the board view, but uh, we can defer that until later. If we can at least just assign it out, then, you know, again, that's a huge incremental improvement. Yeah, the um, operation, the monitor teams alert dashboard already has that paradigm in the uh, in the board or in the list. So we could probably just mirror that. Yeah, and that would be great as well. Um, if we are able to just bring this column over and show the same thing that they've got here. Yeah, totally. Um, number four, being able to create an incident from an alert and this one as well, like if we can provide this column with a link to the incident, you know, that's a bonus. Uh, I, I would say not part of the core requirement, but if you do it, that would be great. Um, this just adds a create incident button up top here, and it should follow the same workflow that you get. Uh, all of these ones in their environment already have an incident, but like if I click on one and it doesn't have an incident, I can create a new incident. So we should follow basically that same workflow. Uh, it should take you to this page. So an incident is just an issue. It, it's just a, a type of issue. So instead of having issues selected, you have incidents selected. Um, and then once they create it, it should be associated back with that alert so that they're linked. All right, number five, alerts will have a permanent URL link that users can reference to find and identify a specific alert. I know we had a lot of discussion about that. I think it was down here. Um, my takeaway was if we can have a link to both a dedicated page and the drawer, like two different links, one for the drawer, one for the page, that's great. Um, but for the sake of MVC, if we just have a link to this dedicated page that you referenced here in your comment, I mean, that's great because then they can share that link out, they can point to it, they can at least reference it. I think if we just add this icon at the top for them to copy it. And then also I would expect if they click this title, I would expect it to take them to that dedicated page as well. Um, so they could either copy it or click it to go to that page. Uh, number six, and just stop me if I'm going too fast here. Um, users will be able to choose to view alerts in either a list view or a Kanban board view. So again, like priority wise, I think I would actually move this down below changing the status of the alert. So this is probably our last priority is having a second view, um, but that would just be the ability to toggle between these two. Um, and then lastly, they'll be able to change the status of an alert. So right now all we have is, um, did we get all the statuses in or are we all four of them? Yeah. Oh, we did. So I guess we're done with this then. Yeah. Uh, it sort of just came for free when I was doing, uh, when I was doing the status, uh, column. So I just, that's what that, uh, my, that drop down was in that column. 
Okay, great. So I will, to avoid confusion, I'll remove this from this because we already have it. So you'll just have these six, and I think they are more or less in priority order there amongst themselves. So technically, I think we could release any one of these independently. I don't think there's any reason we have to wait for all six. Um, they're all very iterative incremental improvements. So I would say, let's just go down the list and see how many we can get done here in, uh, in 13.8 or 13, yeah, 13.8. <laughs> Yeah, I um once we release this MVC and I remove the feature flag that is currently hiding it, I won't have a feature flag for any of these. Well, that's not true. I'll have a feature flag for the Kanban board because that is quite a bit of work. Um, but the other ones seem like they can be done uh incrementally um without a feature flag. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. And um, again, I, I know we don't have perfect mocks for all of these, you know, including like, we don't have a mock with everything in it at the moment, but I'm hoping that, you know, like assigning individuals, we've already got a really strong paradigm. So I'm hoping we don't necessarily need a mock for that. And um, if you have more questions along the way, let's just stay in sync between you and myself and Kyle. Yeah, I think we've been doing a great job um, at that so far. So let's just, yeah, let's just continue on with it. And Alexander, for the details in the alert, uh, if you feel that the format is not good, or if there's something that I can do some parsing on the back end to help you out, I, I'm I'm happy to do that. Um, I, I I'm I'm anxious to have the first version of alerts working. I'm gonna pair up with the. Uh, Mike from the configure team today on the work in progress MR. As soon as we have that working, we can uh, maybe add more information in terms of network policy. So hopefully you're going to have everything to split out from the front end code for that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, you know, part of the reason I asked for your, your feedback on the alerts, add alerts in the policy UI is I don't have, uh, you know, I, the, the back end isn't complete yet. I don't have it working locally. And so, and Sam, this goes to serve my, my mix up with policy name as well is like, I've created alerts manually just by like seeding the database. And so I'm assuming where I'm grabbing the information from is where the policy name is going to be in the back end. But, you know, once the back end gets solidified and I can get it working locally, I'll make sure the policy name shows up in the description and like see what information I, I'm, I, the front end actually has to work with. So okay. thank you, Zamir, for keeping me updated. Yeah, that sounds great. And I know we've stated it before, but again, just to be super clear, the name of the alert should be identical to the policy name. There's nowhere else that they would be able to configure the, like a, a different name for the alert. So the policy name is the alert name. They're one of inter interchangeable terms. Thank um, you for clarifying. Something just occurred to me I, again, kind of like last week, I was like, oh, I, I wonder if we caught this. Um, there is a, a very real danger and we discussed this earlier on, I think before you came on board, Alexander, and I'm just realizing now, I don't know if it made its way into the requirements. So, um, kind of one that just slipped through the cracks. It's really easy for users to just set everything to generate an alert. And when you're talking about network flows, like that's a high, high, high volume activity. And so you users should not be having everything generate an alert. They should be extremely selective about which policies generate an alert. It really should only be policies that they legitimately plan to have a user manually review that um, so if they're just like logging all traffic to port 80, for example, and it's a web server, like they're just going to get hit by this flood of alerts. GitLab is not going to handle it. Cilium is not going to handle it. We're probably going to crash, you know, their application and probably crash GitLab as well. Like, so they we're, we're really trusting our users to be judicious when they set up their policies to only 
have alerts triggered for things that are likely to be relatively low volume and you know things that they actually plan to review manually. Um, so we do need a warning on that policy page when they say I want to add an alert or have this policy generate an alert that you know helps give them some guidance you know around what when and where that should be used like you know warning you know this can cause Cilium to have performance issues if you suddenly do this for all network traffic. It, it, I mean, I'm happy to wordsmith something with you on what that alert text should say, but the bottom line is we need some way to like just caution users whenever they add that alert onto the policy page. Um, and I think that's something that slipped through the cracks. So I, I should probably, I'll add that into our follow-up design epic just so that we don't lose track of it. I remember seeing this warning at some point in the mock-ups. I don't think it made it into our mocks. I know we talked about it, mm -hmm. but we never, I think I forgot about it. And I think maybe everyone else did too. I um Okay, that should definitely go in the MR that I have up currently with the uh, add alerts in the policy UI, because that seems like the right place to put it. Um, so if you could, instead of adding a follow-up issue, just comment on the add alerts to policy UI issue. Um, and maybe, yeah, like you said, wordsmith something, and then I will uh, add it to that MR that's up. Also, I don't know if an alert is like enough here. I don't yeah. trust you. I wouldn't trust users to not just be, or not be like, yeah, this, okay, I see this, but this is going to be fine. And then it blows up yeah. uh, or like unexpectedly something goes wrong and it blows up, you know, like they could be judicious about this, but then still have like a major catastrophic failure, which still causes this issue. Is there any precautions we could put, any checks, any uh, limiters in the back end that we could put for like, oh, over X amount of alerts, we stop or and do something, I don't know. Yeah, that, that is going to be limiting on the agent side for sure, because otherwise we're going to break the whole agent. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What about inside of Cilium? Is there a risk that we crash Cilium and take down their networking? No, there's no risk. Uh, we were going to use something that would be a little bit heavier on the load to create the mapping, but I was able to manage uh, around that. Okay. So we are not touching the, the scalability of ceiling with our change. The only thing that we need to be aware is that the agent has some limitations to keep stuff in the memory. So as soon as we reach a limit, then we are going to step to, to drop and maybe to log some error message somewhere. Okay, so that should probably be part of our warning message that says, you know, if you have too much volume, we're just going to start dropping alerts. Like this is not intended to be your, you know, our alerts dashboard is not your SIM. <laughs> it's not your yeah. logging tool. You know, yeah. if you want to log all of the Cilium traffic, that's why you have a SIM. Go route it that way. Okay. Yeah, I know when Arthur was looking into it before, he was concerned that Cilium, the way he was hooking it, Cilium wasn't going to be able to handle it, that there would be major performance issues in Cilium. But Sounds like you've worked around that. Yeah, but there is a limitation that if you if you want all the information uh, in terms of uh, um, relationship between the policy and endpoint natively, then you need to add uh, an option on when you install Cilium. And I think that was the code path that Art was working on. Um, it would be good because the solution would come from the Cilium side, but on the other hand, we would uh, we would hit this uh, scalability issue. Okay, so so you're not using that setting then. Yeah, I'm going to document the settings that we would be using just for the sake of clarity, but we are not using that. Got it. Yeah, that's great news. I'm I'm happy to hear that. So, because yeah, there is a risk that you know you turn on alerts and then you've exposed a potential way for an attacker to denial of service your system. So. <laughs> 
it gets a little bit tricky there. Okay, no, that's fantastic. It sounds like we're already thinking through those rate limiting things. We just need to make that clear in the UI. Um, um, we are running and, out of time. Uh, one more question for Zamir. Zamir, I know, I don't know how much you know about this. Like you said, you Agent K has a limiter on it. And then if you reach it, it will give some sort of error. That isn't, I feel like that is an error that I should be displaying in the UI somewhere. If they hit their limit, maybe on the alerts list page where they're like, hey, just so you know, like we're dropping the last whatever, the oldest ones because you hit your limit or something like that. Is there, <laughs> and I, I don't know if you know this question, but maybe this is one for when you pair with uh, the Agent K person today is like, is there a way for me to get that error and when it happens and display it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Maybe what we can do is that we can add a flag uh, on the last error, last alert, saying that that's the last one. Uh, you're not going to hear back anything from that. But how to implement the limit and where? Well, I need to figure out with the uh, yeah. guy. I can I can add my limits, but probably he's going to add limits for the whole API calls. So that's something that might be like global for the architecture of the agent K and not only specific to our module. Cool. Thank you. All right, what's uh what's what's next? Um let's see. So reading for Tiago, he was asking about the vulnerabilities database being out of date. I think that is concerning. If that is the case, we should be updating that every single release. Um if we're not, we need to start doing that. That would be a back-end thing. So um, I'll work that asynchronously with Tiago. We've got to you know, either schedule it in every release to make sure we update that Vuln database or uh, ideally automate it in some way. But um, yeah, if we're not already publishing updates every single <laughs> milestone, we've got to start doing that. That's going to be problematic for our customers. Yeah, and I was not sure if it's not updating or if there is a bug, then it's not updating because of the bug. That was my confusion there. Yeah. So either way, we're going to have to look into that. I'll prioritize it appropriately, but it's going to get a high priority. Yeah, seems bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. If we are at time, if you need to drop, go ahead and feel free, uh, Alexander. If you have time to stay on. We can go through your last item here. Oh, it was handled asynchronously. It's fine. Um, cool. I'm content with it. Awesome. Well, thanks for all your, your good work on alerts. I'm looking forward to it. I'm starting to put together a release post uh, for draft release post for 13.9. So, you know, Alexander, on your end, when you have a good solid screenshot, uh, send it over to me. Um, or let me know and I'll grab it from the staging project, you know, when we have it at a point that we're ready to show it off. And um, I'm really excited for this one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'll be out. I'm on, I'm on PTO all next week. So um, it won't be next week. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah, no rush on that. We have usually till maybe a week or so before the release date. So yeah, the 15th around. So Yep. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Okay. Bye, friends.